Father, we thank you. We bless your name because you are God. You are the king eternal. The I am that I am. The unchangeable God. The incontestable God. The one who was and he is and he is to come. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are gathered here and we invite you. We thank you, mighty God, that you shall meet us at the point of our needs. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Every heart that is open, desiring to see your hand. The Bible declares that your hand is not shortened that it cannot serve. No, your ear deaf that it cannot hear. We thank you, Mary God. We thank you, Mary Father. We know that every moment we meet, you are available. Your power is available. And you are ready to transform lives. In the name that is above every other name, I decrease that you might increase. Use these lips of clay to speak your divine oracles. In the name that is above every other name, do what no man can do. What you and you alone can do. And take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you are looking wonderful. No, no, no. Are they smiling? Look at them again and say, neighbor, neighbor. you are looking wonderful. Uh, shake their hand and say, neighbor, neighbor. you are looking wonderful. If they are too cold, slap them and say, neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 God is good. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah, somebody. We bless and we exalt the name of the living God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's an awesome time to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Those that are present, those online, even those that are not here that you watch online. <laughs> Praise God. I believe beyond any doubt that, like what I always say, there are no coincidences in the spirit. Everything that happens in the spirit is by divine orchestration and divine appointment. That's why most of the things you call mistakes end up in miracles because you think it's a mistake. Like what the Bible declares on Samson and the Bible says, but it was God who caused Samson. To men it was a mistake, but to God, God was working out something. Praise God. Praise God. So once you realize that most of the times when you look at your life and when you look at all the happenstances of your life and you realize that there is no mistake in your life, your, your, the way you think changes because now you are at a place where you understand why David says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. A, an order is not a request. When an order is given, if you, are, if you have a military background, you understand that when an order is given, everybody has to follow the order. Praise God. That even demons have to submit when an order is given. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why Apostle Paul comes in and says, all things work it together for the good. To those that love the Lord, that were called according to his purpose. All things, all things, the good and the bad, all work it for the good. Praise God. Praise God. That Joseph had to put a, a stamp <laughs> and he said, you meant it for the bad, but the Lord did it for the good. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, we bless the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we have visitors in the house. Praise God. So we must tell those ones that did not come that we had visitors. We didn't miss them. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. So just celebrate 
those that are here for the first time, hallelujah. And there is no first time in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just make a joyful noise unto God. <laughs> hallelujah. This time to miss. Can you bring me? He is shining. He is shining. Your light is shining in my life. He is shining. He is shining. Your light is shining in my life. He is shining. He is shining. Your light is shining in my life. He is shining, oh, he is shining. Your light is shining in my life. I told you that most of the times when you lift up a song or you lift up an anthem in the spirit, that is one of the quickest ways to engage in the angelic. Praise God. Praise God. You can never walk on this life alone. If you, if, if you think it is easy, try it. If you think it is easy, try it. The only way you can get to a place where you can live according to the level in which God has set for you is when you use the spiritual resources that God has given you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 There's a song many years ago that they would sing. They said, give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning till the end of days. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning to the end of days. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning to the end of day. When you feel like you are low, just say, give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning to the end. Of days. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Look at anybody say translating spiritual language. Translating spiritual language. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you ready? Let's go to the book of First Samuel, chapter 30. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you of a preacher who prayed a prayer and he said, God, set me on fire. Let the world come and see me burn. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. As a preacher, I can pray that prayer. But you as a businesswoman, you can't pray that prayer. <laughs> Praise God. When you're saying, Lord, set me on fire, set, Lord, set me alight. Attract those that should come to my business. This thing of God 
God invited us to an inheritance. Praise God. And most of the times you realize that in as much as we've been brought to an inheritance, you have to be a believer who understands your walk or your journey in the Lord. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? It surprises me every time when I read John. Now I will start from what everyone would have started from. <laughs> Praise God. Because when we were praying, there's a prayer point that was spoken and in a teaching we were told that the Bible says that of everyone born of a woman, nobody is greater than John. On all the prophets that came, all of them, nobody is greater than John. But the Bible began to say that you now you are what? Greater than John. Why? Because the prophets were saying the Christ shall come. John the Baptist said there is the Christ. But as for you, <laughs> Christ in me, I am a rat alive. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating with somebody here? So the prophets desired to live in these days. The prophets desired to live in these times. So all of them were pointing to Christ. John showed them the Christ. That's why he was greater than them. But as for you, the Bible says you have this treasure in earthen vessels. The moment you understand the revelation of Christ, you might explode. Understanding what is at your disposal. If you have ever, if you have ever traveled with me, you, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't walk like a puppy. I walk with authority. Why? Because when you understand, it is the understanding of what you have. That determines how you operate in what you have. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? I am an akabuasa. Eba ba ba buwa rebele ba bata. Praise God. Praise God. Say, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First Samuel. So, when you understand that Christ is in you. You will see that everybody who ever came, because many times we caught of people that walked with God. They walked with God, but you are walking with God. And it would surprise you that all of them who walked with God, they did not have the Holy Spirit inside of them. They did not have the Holy Spirit. We're being told right now that when you read in the olden times, the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. And the spirit of the Lord came upon. But when it comes to these times, the spirit lives from within. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The spirit lives from within. When you start understanding that you are a distributor of power. That, <laughs> that what happened on Joseph that the Bible says everything in the house of Potiphar increased because Joseph was in the house. When you start understanding that you are carrying the Holy Spirit, every environment you enter, you arrest and dominate. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. Ah, it does not matter. God is anointed you to be a business person, politician, lawyer, doctor. When you arrive in that place, you'll be declaring, Jesus says, occupy until I come. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 
Am I communicating with somebody? Am I communicating with somebody? I decree, may people mistaken you for people they respect. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel. Chapter 30. All right. Mara deheleva aske mahadu kumayaka. First Samuel chapter 30. Are you there? All right. Now it happened when David and the men came home to Ziklag on the third day that they found that the Amalekites had raided on the Nagev, the south of the country, and on Ziklag. And he had overthrown Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they had taken captive of the women and the men who were there and bought small and great. And they killed no one but carried them off to be used as slaves. And they went on away. When David and his men came to the town, it was burned and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captives. And then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they, could, they were too exhausted to cry anymore. Now David's two wives had been taken captive. Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal. Somebody said the widow of Nabal. <laughs> Some men. Further, David was greatly dis distressed because the people wanted to stone him. Of all, they were embittered, each man for his own sons and daughters. But David felt strengthened and encouraged himself in the Lord. Hallelujah. And David said to Abiyata the priest, Ab Ahimelech's son, please bring me the effort. So Abiyata brought him the effort, and David inquired of the Lord, Say, shall I pursue this band of raiders? Will I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. You will surely overtake them, and you will surely recover all. Somebody say, Pursue. pursue. Overtake. overtake. You will recover all. Pursue, pursue, overtake, overtake. you will recover all. Somebody say pursue, pursue overtake, overtake, you will recover all. One of the things you understand when it comes to life is that life comes with its battles. Life comes with its battles. No matter who you see, there is a battle they are fighting. No matter who they are, there is something they are battling with. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? Abraham was a blessed man by the Lord. It was not just a blessing out of prayer. God came and blessed him himself. But when you enter Abraham's household, from where he was coming from, there was a battle. There was a battle of premature death. The Bible declares when you read your Bible, the Bible says that the father of Abraham Terah gave birth to a son who was called Nahor. And the Bible says that the, the brother of Abraham died before his father in the land of his nativity. When you give birth to a child, you want the child to take care of you. When you start a business, you want the business to take care of you. But the father of Lot died before his father. To make matters worse, he never left the land he was born. He was born there he went to school there. He married there. He died there. 
So when God wanted to bless Abraham, he said, <laughs> because the first limitation that Abraham was facing was the environment he was. That's why when you read your Bible, the Bible declares that when Jesus was to be born, God never allowed Jesus to be born in Nazareth. God made sure that every maternity ward is full. So he made sure that every man, there would be children. So that the maternity wards are few at the time Jesus is born. Jesus and the mother and the father, they had to travel to what Bethlehem of Judah. So that Jesus can be born in the city of David. Because if Jesus was born in Nazareth, the parable that says can anything good come out of Nazareth was going to affect Jesus' ministry. So God had to fight a battle. So if he is born in this land, there is a curse over this land. Nothing, no matter how gifted anybody from Nazareth is, nothing good comes out. So God had to make sure every maternity ward is full to capacity. They had to travel to another city. Ah, it's a mistake. No, it's divine orchestration. <laughs> divine orchestration. Divine orchestration. Divine orchestration. So God had to make sure this man has to leave this place. Jesus is healing people everywhere. He arrives in Nazareth. The Bible says he could not do many miracles in Nazareth. Blind people were left blind. Yet the man had the power. But the, 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 as long as you are in Nazareth, there's a problem. So God had to say, Abraham, come. And go to a land which I shall bless you. And a lot of people do not understand how to translate spiritual language. People take things casually. If you live casual, you die like a casualty. Life. Life is not a joking matter. Life. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. So, Abraham, God says, come out. Abraham comes out. He has come out of the land where he has come out from. But still, there is a problem. There is a problem. Abraham and Sarai. Ab God calls Abraham at 70. He says, you are going to have a child. At 70, God says, you are going to have a child. Abraham leaves the land. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Abraham leaves the land. All right. Abraham leaves the land. Seven, eight, ninety. After 30 years, the prophecy comes. I'm not talking about you crying after two months, one month. <laughs> you are still a chicken baby. <laughs> 30 years. The Bible says Abraham did not stagger in faith. If you read in Romans, the Bible says Abraham fought hope against hope. Do you know what that means? There were two hopes. The hope of his flesh and the hope of the prophecy. The body was now saying no, Papa. But the prophecy was saying, you are going to be a father of many nations. Now, even when you start to start from the even when you read on, on Abraham, you realize that the Bible, the Bible speaks of Abraham, and the Bible says, when God calls Abraham, when did he call him? Genesis what? 12. All right. So in Genesis 12, God calls Abraham. And when God calls Abraham, Abraham was a moon worshiper. Astrologer. He didn't believe in God. Right? He was in what? Astrologer. 
was astrology, right? And astrologers, they believe in, in the moon, the sun. And how did God call Abraham? What did God do? He showed him stars. God will speak in a language that is close to your understanding. The reason many people say they do not hear God is because there is, there is a way they hate someone saying they hate God. And people want to hear God in the same way. There are many senses in the spirit. You have five senses in the flesh. In the spirit, there are many senses. You can feel many spiritual impulsions in the spirit. But before God starts training you so that other senses can hear, he will start from what you know. You will start from what you understand. When you started, when you're still starting, you would hold the Bible and you just open and say, wherever I open, God speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> and when you open in that place, <laughs> you find a scripture dealing with the situation. You will start with what you know. But as you grow, as you stay more, you will no longer be spoiled. That's why many people say, when I started, I would just pray once, things would happen. But now, uh -uh, you are now growing. You, ca you can no longer pray a prayer of an infant, of a, of a nepiros in the spirit, of a baby in the spirit. Yet you are now a juos. You are now a mature baby. <laughs> you can't. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't. You can't. So you have to be able to understand spiritual language. That is the first thing ever a believer should learn. Like I always say. No matter how much you might learn 17 dimensions of, if you have not yet learned the voice of God, you might be in trouble as a believer. Because your journey as a child of God has to be led by the voice of God. And most of the times, God will not go on faith that to be speaking to you through people. Because there are certain informations he has to release to you. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? Because if the information that pertains to your destiny is distorted, it means the way you go to your destiny will be distorted. When you read, if you go there on um, Genesis chapter number 12, the Bible says, and Abraham departed as the Lord had commanded him. He, he, Abraham departed as he would have departed in any other way. But specifically the Bible says, and Abraham departed as the Lord had commanded him. There are many people that God spoke to and they departed the way they wanted. They departed the time they wanted, not as he commanded. Not as he commanded. So there are specifics when it comes to God. That he tells Noah, if you are to build an ark, these are the inches on this side. Each room, these inches. If, if, you, if you miss an inch, <laughs> this boat will sink. <laughs> he goes on the temple, he gives them specifics. If I am to come and indwell, in that tabernacle, these are the inches. God is a God of specifics. He's a God of specifics. He's a God of specifics. Praise God. Praise God. So that is why now, you understand that Jesus said to say, I'll pray to the Father so that he might give you what? The Holy Spirit. Praise God. As you go on John chapter number 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, where we read now, David arrives from Beto. And David arriving from Beto, he arrives at a land called what? 
Ziklag. He arrives at Ziklag and what begins to surprise you when you read that scripture, David when he arrives at Ziklag, the Bible says they saw smoke. The city was burnt. There was nothing to talk home about. He's a mighty man. How many people have, maybe you have been through it that maybe you are coming from the mountain to pray. You are feeling the love of God, the grace of God, the anointing of God. You arrive home, they are waiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are waiting for you. <laughs> All right. Pray first. Uh, it, it, it's not you alone. They did it to Jesus. The devil waited for Jesus to fast for 40 days. The last day of the fasting, he says, you have fasted, you have gathered anointing, right? But change your anointing to bread. You are hungry. Because the Bible says Jesus was now hungry. He says, change your prayer to bread. Coming from mountain, he says, change your prayer to rain. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And by that time, you will feel defeated. Because warfare, many people think warfare is, 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 there are many different kinds of warfare, but the greatest warfare ever in the, from the word or in the spirit is the warfare that has to do with the what? With your soul. It is your soul. That's why I always tell people, when you read Matthew chapter number four, I want you to study it. How was Jesus tempted? It will shock you. The same way you sit in your house on that corner and you say, I'm depressed. That's how Jesus was tempted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can we go on that diagram again? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you as a person, you are made up into what? Three, right? Look at that. I bind you. <laughs> All right. You as a man, you are made up into three, right? You have the what? The soul and the what? And the spirit. You have the body, the soul, and the spirit. And on all this, this is the most dangerous place. Because on the soul, we have what? The mind, the will, and the emotions. So, the, the devil understands that you can't touch the spirit. Your spirit is not easily accessible. But the best thing the enemy can do in order to tackle, the, to, to have hold over the body, it comes on the soul. And most of the times, to many people, it might not be the mind, it might be the emotions. That anger, that anger, that anger, that it starts as anger, it becomes a spirit of So between these three things, that's how he comes to the soul. So when we say bring souls to Christ, we are not saying bring bodies. A body can come, but the soul is not transformed. We don't want the body here without the soul transformed. When God says, I need souls, he's not talking about this, your body that you are wearing a good there. He, he wants the soul to be transformed. Your mind, the way you think, your will, your emotions, well controlled, packaged. What the Bible says in the book of Second Corinthians, chapter number two, verse ten, right? Where the Bible, where the Bible declares, and it says, um, "The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are strong and mighty through God unto the pulling down of every stronghold of the devil." Casting down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I'm bringing to captivity every thought. 
That is a good one. So the enemy, what he wants, in every information he might put, is to make sure that men, they might come to the house of the Lord, but their souls are captured. That's why I can talk about faith, and you may not believe in the faith. You believe more that that chair will not make it to fall than the hand of God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because there is the information that would have been put in the inside of you. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was being tempted, the Bible says, you would hear the Bible saying, and the devil showed Jesus the nations of the world. How? So how did he get the power to show Jesus a vision? It's historical in the Bible. Because he cannot show you the kingdoms of the world, not of a city, of the world. So when you are seated in the enemy, showing you different things that, that, that sometimes they are not even there. That is the same way Jesus was tempted. He was being shown things. He was being whispered to. Yeah, the devil said to Jesus, jump. To you, it might seem I was seated. I had a funny thought. No, it was not a funny thought. That's the warfare I'm talking about. Imagine a person, Jesus is on the roof of the temple and the devil says, jump. If he did not know it's the voice of the devil, you would have thought maybe it's his mind or it's God. Because a scripture was quoted there. Say, jump, even the Bible says he will send his angels. Psalms 91. And your feet will not strike to the ground. You might come from there saying, I got a revelation for my prayer. Praise God. Amen. So you have to get to a place where you understand God's words. The first thing, first point is that God speaks to you in a language you want. Speaks in a language you are familiar with. Praise God. Praise God. There is a prophet in the book of Acts called Agabus. You ever heard that name? It sounds like a term. Agabus. Agabus arrived where Paul was and he wanted to prophesy. Agabus removed his belt and tied Saul and said to him, You are going to be arrested. He could have just said it. But it was a graphic illustration of what was going to happen. So many people, God is speaking to them daily. Many people, God is speaking to them day and night. But the biggest problem is not understanding that the real battle that is there when it comes to the realm of the spirit, it is about the soul of man. God wants to be able to use your mind. He wants to be able to use your will that you are willing. That is the Bible says in the book of Isaiah. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. It's Isaiah 119. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the wants to use your emotions. And on the emotions, that is where many people, the enemy, especially in our days, in our days, that is where the enemy is capturing a lot of people. Some people have become mentally fed. Some people know how to control their will because they're fruits of the spirit. That, you, that thing, when you are young, you want to steal sugar, there, but something is telling you I'll be beaten. You are hesitating. When your will is strong, you want to do it, but you say, but I can't do it. I'll try. Praise God. Praise God. So these are the battles that people go through. So David arrives at Ziklag. And the Bible says when David arrives at Ziklag, the city was 
shattered and shattered. When he arrived at Ziklag, the Bible says when he saw the city shattered, the Bible says they cried until they could not cry anymore. Hear me? They cried until they could not cry anymore. Their tears were rolling until there were no more tears left. I don't know if you've ever been in that situation. When you look at a situation, you look at it, you start by complaining. And the God you're complaining to is not answering. <laughs> you end up just looking at it and say, let's cope. Let's go a bit. <laughs> he cried until he could not cry anymore. The Bible says, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. Through scripture, the encouragement came from within. The same strength you can use to cry, you can use it to fight. There are battles that I saw if I continue crying, I won't go anywhere. I had to fight. I had to fight. If I continued crying, I was not going to see change. I had to fight. I had to fight. So the Bible says, he said to the priest, bring me an effort. The priest brought an effort and the Bible says he inquired from the Lord. He inquired from the Lord. The second thing you have to understand is that when you are a child of God and you are a believer, because we are in days where people want to hear God speak. Right? And I told you that when you are to pray with God, to God, with God, it must be a conversation, not a monologue. It must be a conversation. We will pray and we will pray. That prayer is to quicken, charge your spirit and strengthen angels. You know, your Bible says angels excel from strength to strength. So when you pray in tongues, that's what you are doing. You are encouraging yourself, you are motivating yourself, you are charging yourself, and the spirits or angels, if I just say spirit, someone will be confused. And the angels that God has assigned for you. Praise God. Praise God. That's why Paul says, I speak in tongues of what? And of what? When you start speaking in tongues of angels now, even if you may not understand what you are saying, but actually you'll be having a conversation. You'll be sending charges and decrees. How many here have been, how many here have gone into a place where someone has told you that they've met you somewhere and you've not heard from them? Say, we saw you in so so offices. You are not there. And after some time, something good came out from that office. That's the means of angels. That's the means of angels. The, the very same way you are, the very same way you are. Yes. The very same way you are. And certain people will meet them, speak with them, and not even know. <laughs> you do like Pastor T. <laughs> If right now I'm to ask you the men you met in the mountain, you might not be able to explain it. You might not. But that man knew. And it was an angel. I understand what I'm saying. You may not, he, he would not even explain. He said, I met a man. I didn't know. He just told me, you must go and meet this man. He will help you. It was when? And how, when did we meet? Those are 
Hear me. Life is spiritual. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Life is spiritual. Everything else can be physical. We can play around. Life is spiritual. Everything that has to do with life is spiritual. It is spiritual. It is spiritual. Am I going to get into somebody? Am I going to get into somebody? <laughs> you dream, you, 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 you buy a phone, the screen will break. Buy a phone, the, you think it's a phone, yet it's a message. I know it. So David arrives and inquired from the Lord, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? He was inquiring and the Lord answered. And the Lord answered. Alright? So prayer must be a conversation. Prayer must be what? A conversation. It must be a conversation. You have to speak and he has to speak. And sometimes he speaks to you, but the problem is you have you you are anticipating that voice you heard in a movie. That's how you want God to speak. And sometimes he has been conf confirming most of the things you've been praying. It might not be through your ears. It might be through dreams. It might be through dreams. It might be through a vision. Praise God. Praise God. Am I communicating to somebody? So the Bible says, he prays, shall I pursue, shall I overtake? God said, pursue, overtake, he recover. He left the city. He began to pursue. Now, I want to show you that God answered him. They had a conversation, God answered him. He had a reply. He was told to what? Pursue, overtake, you shall recover all. But what began to surprise me, in the answer of God, it seemed as if God's answer was not complete. And that is how God speaks. That is how God speaks. Am I going to get in somebody? That is how God speaks. So when you begin to study, we can study on David and Abraham. There is one similar thing you will see between them. All of them were not given a direction. All of them. Go to a land, I shall show you. David was just told, pursue, you will recover. There was no direction. Why? Because he has to order your steps. Many people now, if God would show you your future, it will become a problem. <laughs> you won't matter anymore. <laughs> if he tells you every corner you should enter, Am I communicating somebody? So, God wants to be the center and the compass point. Praise God. One of the scriptures you read, if you read Psalms, if you read Psalms 23. Psalms 23. David shows how God walks with men. I told you there are certain scriptures that are not just scriptures. There are certain scriptures that are guidelines. Psalms 23 shows you how God walks with men. He leads me beside the still waters for his name's sake. Not for you. For his name's sake. There are things God will do so that his name may not be embarrassed. So he is forced to do it. Ah, there is a certain way you must refuse to struggle for God's sake. You just get into prayer and say, God, I beg. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. For his name's sake. He says, even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because thou art ease with me. 
I may not see you, but you are there. And you will not allow me to die. You will not allow me to die. If there is one thing that I have understood between God and men, those that trust in him can never be put to shame. Amen. Romans chapter 19. Those that trust in the Lord can never be put to shame. I have been in situations, I'm telling you, I can't be stressed with something I can't control. I come out smiling. Many people are sick over problems that were solved after they got sick and stressing. You remember the time when you were stressing about rent and you did not know where to find it, but God provided. Are you the one who found it? You did it. And there God was trying to test you. How much do you trust me? At the end, he supplied, but he tested you. And in heaven, they were shaking their head. This one, it still had dodgy. <laughs> the way they are panicking. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Because there are people that had no Holy Spirit. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They did not know that it was in the last minute God would come. They said, do it. Do it. They were thrown into a furnace seven times water. The people that threw them died. They died. And that is the faith God is looking for believers. My favorite scripture, Matthew 7. The Bible says, Are you not of more importance than the flowers? Are you not of more value to God than the birds of the air? They neither plant nor harvest, but I feed them. Many people claim to walk in faith out of enthusiasm, goosebumps. But when it comes to following God, it is abnormal to be normal. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. I thought that my father looked at me and said, you knew what you were doing. <laughs> I hear what I'm saying. Because by that time, it didn't make sense. By that time, there was no evidence. By that it looked as if somebody is just going life recklessly without plan for the future. But there is something that I knew that this one that I am following, the Bible declares that he will never leave you nor forsake you. This one that I'm following, David says him this way, since I was born until now, I've never seen the righteous being forsaken. No, his children lacking bread. I knew that as long as I can walk and I can hold on to righteous, to righteous, I cannot be forsaken. And if God cannot forsake me and I'm in his hand, there is no way he can leave me hungry. There's no way he cannot open doors for me. Hear me! Go anywhere you go, but go with God. Enter any door you enter, enter with God. Praise God. Praise God. Michael, me getting somebody. If you can explain your life, God is not yet involved. I'm telling you. You have to get to a place where you can't explain your life. People ask you, how did you do it? Because miracle, a miracle, all right. A miracle is a miracle on earth. In heaven, those are solutions. They are called solutions. It's a miracle on earth because you can't do it by yourself. In heaven, they are called divine solutions. Divine solutions. So, malamona masaka baka. So until you get to a place where your trust in God big 
becomes a you 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 are standing on God and you understand God. You understand God. <laughs> there is something under and you are standing. Where the Bible says, this is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his name, we know you will hear us. And if we know you will hear us, we, we know he has answered every prayer we have prayed. You reach to that place where you understand and you become like Jesus in John chapter number 11. He says, God, I know you hear me. But because of these ones that are watching me, let me vocalize the prayer. But I know. Hear me. The God who knows it all, who sees it all, what kind of a prayer will you shout that he has not heard? What kind of a prayer will you shout to God that he does not know? Most of the cries that people go to to God, by that time, God is not in need of your cry. God is in need of you going there. Hear me. God is in need of you going to God. In the midst of the enemy thinking you are at your waist, going to God and say, God, you know I love you. That is what, hear me, the strategies of the enemy never changes. You need to translate spiritual language. The devil said, take everything Job has. Does he worship you for nothing? Does he worship you for nothing? So even the enemy knows that he, when people are if God blesses people, people will love God more. So that's why he's fighting you from enjoying your life. Because your, your, your prayers will change from God give me to God I love you. God, what can I do? It's no longer God do it for me. It's God, what can I do? So the enemy will fight say, take everything. We'll see if he fears you for nothing. That scripture exposed the mind of the devil. It exposed the mind of the devil. Praise God. Praise God. Can you help them? Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Does, do they fear for nothing. Praise God. So he prayed. And God said, pursue overtaking, you recover all. But what began to surprise me as they were going, the Bible declares that as they were going through the journey, David did not know where he was going, but he arrived to a place where as they were going, they met a man along the journey. Hear me. He has been told that you shall recover all. But God did not tell him how. He has been told he shall recover all, but God did not tell him when. Amen. That is what makes him to be God. You can't explain how he does it, but he still does it. Because he does not want to be a Methodist. Because if he does something methodically, you even do it without him. And if you can do it without him, then the enemies easily, can easily trip you. I'm telling you. If to marry a lady just needed a suit, every man would wear a suit. If he just needed lipstick, every woman would put lipstick. But you just know oh, this thing has to do with grace, man. And if you know, you, you, you will see that, oh, that's why the enemy is fighting. If employment came by degree, everyone the degree would be educated, would be employed right now. But there is something needed with you, the grace of God. So while David was going, the Bible says that there was a person who the Egyptians left the Egyptians left a man who they were saying is about to die. 
And the Bible says when they left the man who they said was about to die. The Bible says when they met him, the man only needed water and bread for him to be revived. The person who knew when the children were being taken, when the wives were being taken, only needed bread and water. After you pray, what are you doing? Let's sit in the chair. After you pray, what are you doing? The man that David met was the answer of, was the answer that God had answered him. God said, pursue, overtake, you shall recover all. But in as much as God said all these things, the real answer to pursue, recover all was hidden in a man. If David was rude, even after God told him pursue, he would have delayed himself. There are certain solutions you will do that will be solutions to your life. Praise God. Praise God. The man only needed water and bread. And the man gave the, the direction of where to go. So most of the times God is speaking to men, but many people do not, do not translate the spiritual language in which God speaks to. When you read your Bible, the Bible speaks about a woman who was called a Shunammite woman. And the Bible says the Shunammite woman came to a place where the Bible says the Shunammite woman, the son died after being prophesied by Elijah. Where Elijah said, next year about this time you are carrying a child. The child began to grow at you around 10 years. The child was with the father in the field. And the Bible says the child said, my head, my head. And the child died. After the child died, the mother went to the prophet of God. Hear me? The Bible says when the mother was arriving to the prophet Elijah, Elijah looked at the mother and sent girls and said, the Lord has hidden this matter from me. He's a man who did double the miracles of Elijah, but God had hid something from him. The Bible says after hiding from him, girls tried to investigate. He did not get anything. The woman came to the prophet and said, prophet, that child, that prophecy you prophesied. <laughs> because the Bible says by a prophet they were delivered and by a prophet they were preserved. So if you, are, if you call yourself a prophet, your duty is not only to prophesy and deliver. Your duty is also to what? To preserve. So your intercessory ability has to be strong. You mustn't be strong only on the microphone. Be also strong in the secret place. Because the power to, pro the ability to prophesy is different from the authority to manifest the prophecy. I told about that, right? There is an authority to manifest prophecy. That after Elisha declares, Elijah says, says, go and tell Ahab, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. He prophesies rain, but there is no rain tangible. And what does he do? He enters into the prayer seven times until there is a cloud like a feast of a man. He spoke it before he prayed about it. So it's not only the ability to prophesy what is to happen. It is the ability to enter into the prayer room and create it. Because believers are called to a dimension of creating, which I call the creative realm. There's a prayer of what? Speaking to God. There's a prayer of what? Speaking to things. And there's a prayer of what? Creating circumstances. So you can speak to God praising him. You can speak to things like food, cars, houses. You speak to them. I can't, I can't be hungry. Jesus, when he was hungry, he went to the tree. Because in, there's no mercy in, in heaven. When he wanted a donkey, he says, there is a donkey tied in a village. Bring it here. And there is a prayer of creating circumstances. 
where you are in a disadvantaged place and you create a circumstance. Father, create problems around me that I'm the only solution. I'm the only solution. Creating circumstances. That, that, pr that, 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 that prayer is for believers, the creative realm. Where you arrive in a place and suddenly your face is very visible than ever. You are surprised why are people favoring me? Something is now shining. Everyone thinks you are the one who does it best. Even if there are other people creating circumstances. Praise God. So the Shunammite woman arrived. And the Bible says the moment she arrived, she says, man of God, the child is sick. And remember, the prophet had been given a room there by the woman of God. And every time he was passing, the woman of God was giving her water and bread. Ah. <laughs> Some lunch is not for free, no? <laughs> water and bread. So the man of God was, you are busy eating. Could you God, after, after you give a sacrifice to God, God speaks. It's your own. So the Bible says he left the mountain, went to the house of the Shunammite woman. Such favor, such authority, such relationship is not easy. Removing a man like Elijah from the mountain. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the Bible says when he arrived at the house, the Bible says when he arrived at the house, the Bible says Elijah stretched himself on the child. That on itself. Elisha stretched himself on the child. Hands on hands. This is a 10 year child. Hands on the hands. Nose on the nose. Mouth on the mouth. The Bible says as he was stretching his hand, the Bible declared that the child heat began to come on the boy. And when the child woke up, what did the child do? Sneezed seven times. The child sneezed seven times. After the child sneezed seven times, Elijah, Elisha looks at the mother and says, Mama, right now, go and pick your dogs. The child is just directed and sneezed seven times. But to the prophet, it's not common sneezing. He says, Mama, there is a famine. That will be there for seven years. The woman had to leave the land for seven years, and there was a famine for seven years. When the child is directed, the child sneezes seven times. To them, it was a sneezing. But to a prophet, he translated the language. It's not sneezing. There's a famine coming for seven years. The woman left for seven years. And people started eating each other's children. If she had stayed, their own child was going to die. God is speaking to men every day. God is speaking to people every day. But the problem, people are not attentive. We are busy and the enemy makes sure we are busy with life and everything. To block our hearing from God. Life will become very easy when you are able to hear God's voice. And it is my prayer today that as you leave this place, May some of your spiritual senses be opened by the Lord in the name of Jesus. May the Lord open your spiritual senses by the power of the Holy Ghost. That when you enter places, God do confirm. When you are sleeping in your dreams, God do speak accurately. One of the things I love about dreams is that dreams are detailed. And it is the more, hear me, the more you give attention to God's voice, the more it becomes clear. I want you to catch that. The more you give attention to God's voice, the more the voice becomes clear. 
All right, this is an equation. This is an equation. For God to speak, all right, when your mind and your spirit meet, God speaks. And it will take time, most of the times, for your mind and your spirit to be in one place. Because it needs discipline. Am I communicating with somebody? Am I communicating with somebody? And that is the reason where now prayer and the word is needed. Because the mind is channeled by the word. And the spirit is channeled by prayer and communion. So imagine a child is sneezing, is sneezing and the prophet is saying, the child is not sneezing. There's a prophetic word. Imagine you have a child in your house and you, you, are, you are thinking some things are normal yet, yet God is trying to speak through the child because he, is, he has found no other way to speak to you because you are busy. Because sometimes you can be busy. Busy with life. Busy with certain um, responsibilities in life. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? But God is calling us to a place where he wants us to understand. He wants us to understand. Because God does not want sit. Hear me. God has not created the church so that there are certain people who you will put at a certain place like a government. That's why the fivefold was called for the equipping of the saints for the work of them. That everybody gets to a place where they are equipped. Michael, we get in somebody. Everyone gets to a place where they are what? Equipped. My God. Everyone gets to a place where they are equipped. Michael, we get in somebody. Michael, we get in somebody. Hear me. I pray that God gives you the grace, the anointing, the unction, and the wisdom. Not only to solve physical problems, but also to solve spiritual problems in the name of Jesus. I pray that may your ear be opened by the Lord. May you be able to hear him when he speaks in the name of Jesus. May your ear be attentive to the voice of God that when God speaks to you, your ear will be open to hear him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every blockage I commanded now may be removed in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. May the surrounding of your life, may the Holy Spirit take his place and may he dominate in your environment in the name of Jesus. And every satanic, demonic, demonic, diabolic spirit, diabolic environment, diabolic situation, diabolic breed, diabolic circumstance that has been around you, I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, may the Lord take his place in your life. May everything that is not of God be uprooted in your life by the power of the Holy Ghost. Shout a year, a year. Shout I hear, I hear. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. As you sleep, may God speak to you. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whatever you touch, may God be involved. May you impact life in the name of Jesus. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says when men say there is a casting down, we shall say there is a lifting up. In every environment that may be affecting others, may the Spirit of the Lord lift you up. The Bible declares in the book of Isaiah that when the enemy rise like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up your standard. I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost may the spirit of the Lord lift up your standard. I say may the spirit of the Lord lift up your standard. The Bible declares it's not of whom he will it, nor of him who run it, but it is of God who giveth mercy. I decree mercy over your life. What affected others in your family? It will not affect you. I decree mess in your family. What limited others in your family will not limit you. I decree mess in your life. What stopped others in your family will not stop you. I decree mess in your life. Shout mercy, Lord. 
Shout mercy, Lord. Shout mercy, Lord. You shall be the representative of God in your family. You shall be the representative of God in your workplace. You shall be the representative of God in your lineage. Whatever barrier that the enemy set in your way, let it be removed tonight. I said, let it be removed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible declares when the Lord turns the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth is filled with laughter. They begin to say among the heathens, see what the Lord has done to them. We begin to say among ourselves, see what the Lord has done to us. For those that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, over every soul you draw, over every seed you sown, over every tear you dropped, may the Lord reward you. I love it. Jeremiah declares, Say unto Rachel, over all her affliction, the Lord shall reward you double. I say, May the Lord reward you double. I say, may the Lord reward you double. Isaiah prophesies and says, say to the righteous, it shall be well with them. Where are you in life? What have you gone through? I know the incomparable God. I know the immeasurable God. Right now, as I declare, whatever that was set in the spirit, that is not of God. The Bible declares in Colossians 2, 19, he blotted out every handwriting that was written against us. I saw and I decree and I declare with the same mouth I used to pray. I prophesy in the name that is above every other name. May the Lord bring elevation in your life. May the Lord bring a promotion in your life. May the Lord bring open doors in your life. In the name that is above every other name. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Favor is on your side. Lift up your voice and shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. The Bible says, rejoice not over me, my enemies, when I am down. When I am in darkness, he is my light. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, you shall hear a voice. He shall say to you, go that way. I decree, may your steps be ordered by the Lord. I said, may your steps be ordered by the Lord. For a long time, your ears were blocked. You were walking with God by the way. You were walking with God only by following and loving God. But I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. May your spiritual ears be healed. I said, may your spiritual eyes be healed. May you be able to hear your father. May you be able to hear your God. May you be able to hear your father. May you be able to hear your God. Whatever spiritual blockage that was blocking your prayer life. Whatever spiritual blockage that was breaking your prayer life by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name that is above every other name. May be lifted out of you. May be removed. That blockage is removed. I said the blockage is removed in the name of Jesus. Totokaya, eka palaka tonasa, la solia talalia orua, rada do de dagua, eka basota laya. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, the angels that are assigned over your life, the angels that are assigned over your destiny, angels assigned over your finances. I pray, I command them to be empowered. Let them begin to minister. Let them begin to minister. Let angels minister in your finances. Let angels minister in your marital life. Let angels minister in your financial life. Let angels minister in your in your spiritual life in the name of Jesus Adaba Sandakai Ika Barasa Rande Katala Baros Ataya You shall know the voice of God You shall hear the voice of God Jesus says my sheep knows my voice I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost You are a child of God His voice shall be familiar to you You are a child of God His voice shall be able to speak to you In the name that is above every other name God is not a man that he should lie Nor is he the son of man that he should repent By the power of the Holy Ghost 
Ghost. The Bible says, have you not heard, have you not seen that the Lord God spreads from eternity to eternity? Child of God, as we are praying this morning, as we are praying this afternoon, I decree and I declare, I know that the Lord hears you. The Bible says, before you pray, I would have heard it answered. I pray, may you carry the grace after today of answered prayer. I said the grace of answered prayer. I said the grace of answered prayer. I said the grace of answered prayer. We are sending the spirit. We are sending the spirit. Portals are being opened. I said portals are being opened. Yatoka parata. Lakorata nakataka yatata. Akotoka payata. Lakwarte kataya. Sokota kapara kataya. Ikanosta kandokata. Yeruta nakato manande. Ilatone kataka tokana. Yakwana manaka. Ah, <laughs> The gates are being opened. Likasunama. Gates are being opened. 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 Mana mana. Open up your mouth, begin to pray in the spirit. My God, Salabara Shanaya, Shatos Kapalata, Paracatala, Pasola, Manacatabella, Catam, Shatos Rantetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetet
You have an advantage that the world does not have. You have an advantage that the world does not have. Akua bai. Sabanombera hasada. There's an advantage. 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 We are going to get it. There's an advantage. That business you are doing, there's an advantage. At your workplace, there's an advantage. There's a wisdom you can have. You don't need to go to school for it. You just allow it. Like that. And I was telling someone that I traveled. I traveled on a Friday. And I came back yesterday. Where gold detectors were not detecting gold. A prophetic located where it is. There is ability to look for it. And the Bible says to them that believe. I always tell you that. This thing is not for pastors. This thing is for everybody who believes. This thing is for every believer who believes. It just needs somebody's heart to be opened. And say, God, I am here. Use me. From today, you understand that when you open up your mouth to pray, you are not just speaking words. The Bible says, who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks to mysteries. The Holy Spirit said, today I want to minister to my people. Uh, myself as the Holy Spirit, I want to minister to my people. Uh, there are people that God, I know God has to open you. God has to heal you spiritually. Some, we might be coming from families where the gifting in the bloodline was contaminated. May the Holy Spirit heal. <laughs> Irina tonama maruma na sande ilaporande ila tora na hata akona maske pene korata dika tona manda ika dede katuala abuande konde dada diata ika balata rikando masaya apadirita no dedereta eka buatonde kaya ebuata dasa ebuata dasa ebuata dasa emando kaparudi aske manda iparita lera riande kabala korede rieto Nediri katuni marade kalina marubi dikiri rikalo karugu bianda arega la kore makali arokwende mira riaka na mande kere di la tanze ziasunde mande kare de le mande kaberila rakweira rala kande kariba dana masa liarone salomone kala marone le mana na matonde rata. Kore menele mandara ture mandara kala marudire kala mandorele kasia. Zore manala muraju le tone katua taande. Mukarubi le kota matami na hanjoleta. Rakole parude kala tande. O oh, jamandore kala mande kai. Kerana matume manjano konzana marume le keme. Amaro kala mando kabarabu wasanda kabarana na mandu masai. Oh thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Spirit of the Father. We thank you, Spirit of the Living God. We thank you, Spirit of the Living God. The Lord knows you by name. And the Lord loves you. His focus is you. I want you to give him a chance. I want you to give him a chance. His focus is you. And what God wants to do in your life beyond your ability and what has ever been seen. The Bible says, for eyes have not yet seen, nor ears heard, what God is about to do unto those that love him. What God will do for you in your family, how God will raise you in your family, they have never seen it, they have never heard it. They have never heard of it. You might be the least in your clan and the poorest in your family like Gideon. 
but how God is going to rise you is inexplicable. God has given you the spirit realm. He has given you the power inside of you. You might look ordinary, but you are not ordinary. You are not. You are not ordinary. Some of the things you have been crying and complaining about are the least things you see. The enemy knows that once you get to a position as at your watchman post, it only needs a command. It only needs a command. There are prayers you've been praying that you no longer be prayer points. You no longer take them as prayer points. You speak it because there is power in it. There is power in it. When God gave you the Holy Spirit, if you knew if you knew but in the book of Genesis, when God said, let there be light, it was the Holy Spirit that was creating the light. Let there be trees. It was the Holy Spirit that was creating the trees. I know you, you're just using to speaking in tongues, but I'm telling you. And you know what the Bible says? if the spirit of him that rose Christ from the dead lives in you, he shall revitalize that which is dead. Without the Holy Spirit, Christ would not have resurrected. It was the Holy Spirit at the point of the rapturing of Jesus' body who started regenerating the fibers, reheating his body, Declotting the body for blood to begin to flow. Worms that were there, changing them to become flesh. And that Holy Spirit is now in you. And you are going to see that as you speak, there's an authority that will come on you. I'm one person who believes God does not call people to the point of failure. He will call you for you to go and make impact. There where you are. At your profession, at your workplace, in the marketplace, at the hospital, in the music industry. And he will package you and take care of you. When Paul says, my God shall supply all your needs. He didn't say some. All. If you believe it, that all, you will see all. For a very long time, you've been told, the enemy will try by all means to fight you. Your life not moving is an encouragement to you. And God will not allow it. He will not allow it. He will not allow that. Even if you go into a foreign land with no one you know, come out of that land victorious. God says, come by me. What you need is I will supply. I know we are in a world where people we are working, we are pushing for money. And you realize that is the least thing. Because it is the creation of man. God will give you things beyond the money you have. And you open those doors. You buy things at prices that are ridiculous so that the name of the Lord will be glorified. Amen. 
only the way to know him. That's it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, these ears are your earpieces. Let your lips be open to us. May they hear you in every direction. May they hear you on every direction. Before they wake up every morning, may they hear a voice. May that voice speak to them about the day. May that voice speak to them about the mood of the day. I pray that even their dream life, may it be so accurate that they will dream the people they will meet even with the clothes they are wearing for their next birthday. You are God. And because you love them, this is how you order their steps. This is how your Bible says those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Lead them from this day on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We bless and exalt the name of the living God. Amen. I believe the Lord has blessed you, touched you, transformed you. And I want you to keep on having that dream. Keep on. Keep on pushing him to make that dream come true. Don't let go. Most above all, the children of God. Don't allow distress to overshadow you. Don't allow anxiety. Don't allow worry. Those are just rumors. Most of the things you worried about will fit without your worry. The enemy just wanted you to worry so that you will not get to a place where that people will worry. When you are already, it breaks you. So your faith level has been damaged already. Praise God. Praise God. Spiritual people are what? They say they are emotionless people. Most of the things you are going to do are beyond you. They are beyond you. Even the money you are getting per month, if I ask you with the way you spend per month, sometimes you surprise yourself. Praise God. But I'm praying that you begin to see the spirit of God this morning. That even in your house, You, you find monies you never thought. That is the grace of God. You find monies you never put in, in, in your jackets, in your pockets, in your bank accounts. There are people that will dream about you to bring you to shame. There are people God will bring revelation just to pray for you. Just for you. And that is the season of God. But I mentioned above all, God loves you and he wants to use you. you are, not everyone is called for the pulpit, but where you are, your life, people will envy your God and to follow your God by your life. There are people who look at you, they will ask you, how are you doing? Your life will become a blessing. There are people who have not preached in the family, but they are just following God. Because your life will become a testimony. That they know where you are coming from. Some of them, they grew up with you. Some of them, they are your friends, but when your life starts reaching out, praise God. Praise God. So God bless you. God be with you. In the name of the blood of Jesus. Uh, we have some time.